there is this one type of an event in the universe that tends to produce a ridiculous amount of energy extremely fast, representing the most energetic and the most luminous events since the Big Bang. But despite the power of these events, they generally only last a few milliseconds to maybe maximum a few hours. But they do produce extremely powerful radiation that's visible from pretty much anywhere in the universe. And today these events are generally referred to as the gamma ray bursts. Very powerful bursts of very powerful energy that up until recently did not actually have a very good explanation. But now they do. And very recently the scientists observed one of the most luminous and most powerful such events by using a completely new technique. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this event in more detail and also talking about what we know and don't know about the gamma ray bursts. But first, very very brief history. In the late 60s, the US government launched a bunch of these satellites that you see right here, known as the Vela satellites. Their main purpose was actually to try to see if the Soviet Union was conducting any illegal nuclear tests by essentially detecting some of the highest radiation that would be produced during such tests. Specifically, they were actually able to detect things like gamma rays. But to everyone's surprise, instead they actually found a lot of these unusual emissions coming from very distant galaxies. Something that nobody could explain at first. And it wasn't actually until the early 70s that all of this was sort of revealed, and it wasn't really until the 90s that the scientists were finally able to kind of explain this. It basically remained a mystery for approximately three decades. With the eventual explanation leading to the proposal that these gamma ray bursts generally are produced during some of the most powerful supernova, but the most interesting ones, the short gamma ray bursts, produced during very specific events that the scientists finally confirmed back in 2017, 2018. In this case, these types of short gamma ray bursts are actually produced when two neutron stars collide, creating a black hole in the middle. But as a result of this, they actually produce a ridiculously powerful explosion that's basically visible from billions and billions of light years away from us. These are the most powerful explosions in the universe. Nothing comes even close. And all of this is a result of two neutron stars coming closer and closer until they start to basically shred each other apart and then turn into a black hole. Now this process has actually been studied quite a lot, but all of the proof came during the detection of the gravitational waves coming from this particular event right here. And because this particular gravitational wave detection within just two seconds was also followed by extremely bright emissions of light, in this case this was a definitive proof that neutron star collisions lead to gamma ray bursts, and more importantly it was also found that many heavier elements such as gold, platinum and a lot of other stuff we use in daily life can actually only be produced in these events. And that means that a lot of stuff on planet Earth was very likely produced when two neutron stars collided approximately 5 billion years ago, enriching the early solar system with all of this material. And this had to have happened somewhere relatively close to the solar system. In other words, yet another lucky event that made the solar system and planet Earth the way it is today. But the thing is, if such an event were to occur relatively close to the solar system today, there is a pretty high chance that it would actually cause some kind of a mass extinction. Luckily for us though, these are extremely rare. They generally only happen once every few hundred million years in a typical galaxy, and all of the gamma ray bursts detected so far were billions of light years away from us. So these are currently unlikely to happen anywhere nearby. Although at least one star in the Milky Way galaxy that we've discussed in one of the previous videos should be somewhere in the description, does have a slight chance of possibly causing a gamma ray burst sometime in the future, like distant future. But the actual event doesn't just produce gamma rays, it also produces a lot of other frequencies of light, and specifically a lot of afterglow. And so even though the initial burst might only last for less than one second, and that's of course because of the total size of this object, it's actually really really small, following the initial explosion, all of these emissions coming from the region the emissions that might resemble something like this, will then also start colliding into a lot of different gas that accumulated around this object, which sort of resembles a typical nebula. And as this jet collides with all of this, it actually starts to produce extremely powerful energies in a lot of other frequencies as well. This is what we usually see as an afterglow for anywhere from a few hours to possibly even a few months. And this is exactly what the scientists have recently discovered using microwave observations. And here's what all of this sort of looked like. 
This was actually detected very, very recently using the iconic Alma Observatory. And this is the first time this unusual afterglow was detected in these frequencies. And as you can see here, it lasted for a few months. But I guess more intriguingly, all of this was really only theoretical for many, many decades. As a matter of fact, up until 2005, no afterglow had ever been discovered previously. But because the original theories and explanations required this afterglow to actually be in this location, the official observations and confirmations that these do exist simply imply that we actually understand the theory behind the gamma ray bursts and their formation pretty well. In other words, at the moment there is very little doubt that these are actual events and this is exactly how it works. And to be more specific, this is sort of what happens here. In the beginning, there's usually some kind of a precursor burst that's often caused by the interaction of the crust of these two neutron stars with the massive tidal forces causing the crust of the stars to shatter, producing a lot of emissions. But then, as the black hole forms in this moment right here, it starts to absorb a lot of the material, including the material that previously was inside the neutron stars, with all of this emitting a lot of energy at the same time. So these initial X-ray bursts are usually actually the result of the black hole swallowing some of the material from the neutron star. But after this, as a lot of the material gets ejected along the jets that you see right here, it starts to collide with the gas present around the star system, which actually results in the production of pretty much all sorts of different electromagnetic emissions, anywhere from radio waves all the way to gamma rays. And so, for example, in this particular case, the scientists actually saw this in the optical light, which then started to transfer into the infrared, followed by the radio light and so on. But in this particular case, this detection came from a really far away distance, possibly as far away as 9 billion light years away from us, and because of this, only some of the more powerful emissions were detected by the telescopes located on planet Earth. Because of the distances, no optical emissions, infrared emissions or a lot of other emissions were detected coming from here. But the scientists still wanted to see if they can actually find something using some of the more powerful telescopes. And so they used the network of 66 different telescopes able to detect millimeter frequencies that we refer to as Atacama Large Millimeter Array, ALMA. And as expected, for the first time ever, they did capture millimeter range of radio frequencies emitted from this location, with no other frequencies detected in the process. Which basically suggested several things. First of all, it meant that this was an extremely powerful event, because in this case, the light traveled for nearly 9 billion light years and was still visible with modern telescopes. At the same time, this was clearly the brightest afterglow the scientists have ever seen. As a matter of fact, before ALMA, none of the radio telescopes were sensitive enough to find any of this. And moreover, this event was so far away from us that none of the gravitational wave instruments such as the iconic LIGO that you see right here that's able to detect gravitational waves from billions of light years away from us, actually detected anything, which basically means that it was just really far away. But there was a brief detection of the X-rays coming from this region with NASA's Swift Observatory, the only other telescope that was able to see anything here. But because the scientists found no other light coming from here, it suggested one really strange property. It meant that there was a huge amount of dust present around the object that produced this particular gamma ray burst. Specifically because no optical light was detected and only radio light was produced here, something was essentially blocking the light from coming out. And that something was very likely huge amounts of dust. But nevertheless, this gamma ray burst was still powerful enough to pierce through some of this dust and to still produce certain observations in the X-rays and of course in the millimeter radio waves which in the end suggests that this could have been the most powerful gamma ray burst ever detected, but still with these strange properties where not a lot of other light was produced at the end, while also suggesting that the galaxy where it was produced was also probably somewhat strange and somewhat unusual, the galaxy that hosted the most powerful gamma ray burst found to date. But I guess for now that's unfortunately all the scientists know. Because of the distances and also because of the limited observations, it's going to be extremely difficult to uncover new details about this, mostly because it's not expected for this galaxy to have another burst for at least a few hundred million years or so. But because this particular technique seems to have worked for this gamma ray burst, it means that the scientists can now apply this to other gamma ray bursts and potentially discover one that's much closer, which would allow them to study it in more detail, potentially uncovering new details and new facts about these very strange, very powerful and somewhat scary events. But as I mentioned previously, very important events for, I guess, 
solar systems or star systems where you kind of want to have life on the planet. Because without such an event happening somewhere close to us 5 billion years ago, we would probably not be around. A lot of the materials in our body are basically the result of these ancient neutron stars colliding and producing all of this in just a fraction of a second. But I guess for now, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. Check out the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe check out some of the previous videos on this topic with some of the other bursts we've discussed in some of the previous videos, and maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.